question one. What does it mean to have matched pair data? Well, matched pair data means you have two columns worth of data. And each row is has something unique about it. So, for example, if we were doing a pre-test and a post-test, we'd have the pre-test here and the post-test score here. Now, the, the students, let's name them student A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, those are the different students. Now, matched pair means that if this person got a 74 on the pretest and an 89, and this person got a 80 and then an 84 and then maybe a 100 and a 100, okay, and so on and so forth. The, it's important in matched pair that both of these scores be attached to student A and both of these scores be attached to student D. It doesn't make sense to mix up the columns. So that's how you know it's a matched pair. It could be for pre-test, post-test. Um, it could be before and after. It could be um, uh, husband and wife. Maybe you're comparing IQs of husband and wife, or maybe you're comparing um, where they live, whatever. Each row is connected. Okay. Question two. What are the differences in the hypothesis test between a one sample T, sigma unknown, and matched pairs T? Okay. So there are a few differences. Um, first and, and foremost is that in matched pair, is drawn from one population, while in the one sample t test, um, only one observation is drawn. So, okay, for example, the two lines of data is what that's saying. And in t, you'd just be saying, well, what's the average post or pre test score? But in a match pair, you want to know you're going to start comparing them. Um, and because of that, what we do is we compare the differences here. So we could find, we could make a third column that says, well, what is the difference between these scores? So we've got a, fifth, a, door, a difference of 15, a difference of 4, a difference of 0. Maybe this was a difference of 7. Maybe this person actually went down 4. And then you run your statistics on this last column. Okay, so that's the main differences between matched pair and then just a regular T sample. Question 1. What is the research question? Okay, so what the research question is is what we want to know. So we want to know, does the new procedure change the time it takes to make 100 products? products? B, state the null and alternative hypothesis. Okay, so now the null and alternative hypothesis for this situation is that the, the null is going to be the mu of the difference. So that little d represents the difference because we're going to have three columns here. We're going to have a pre-time in which they time each of the workers beforehand. We'll have a post-time, meaning after they know the procedure, we'll time them again. And then we're going to take the difference between these two. And if they went faster, then we'd expect this time to be shorter, to be smaller. Okay, so that's why it's the difference that we're talking about this third column is equal to zero, meaning nothing changed. And the alternative is that the difference, or the, the oh, geez, sorry, that the difference changed. The difference is a number, meaning it's not zero, which we represent by saying not zero. Okay, question two, just collect the data. Describe the, describe the data collection procedures. Okay, so now what the researchers and the assembly did is they took their nine different workers and they timed them how long it took them to do one, uh, to, to make the one product. Then they taught them the new procedure, they timed them again, and collected their second row of data. Question four, what type of hypothesis test is appropriate? So the two-tailed um, paired sample t-test for means is the appropriate hypothesis test to perform 
Now, a good clue for this is in the question they said, they just want to know, is it different? Is the time faster, slower? They're just wondering, is it different? And so we're going to be using both sides. That's why we use the not equals sign for the two-tailed. B, what are the requirements for this test? The requirements are that the sample mean of the differences come from a normal distribution. Okay, so they have to be normally distributed. I remember we can check that by sample size greater than 30 or a QQ plot. H, present your conclusion in the form of an English statement. We have insufficient evidence, because we failed to reject, to say that the time to produce 100 products is any different after the implementation of the new assembly procedure. So basically, um, we had insufficient evidence to find that the alternative hypothesis was true. Question five. Yeah, there's nothing. The new procedure didn't seem to do anything. It didn't change. It didn't statistically significantly change the, the time. And so they were no, neither faster nor slower. And so if it costs money to implement that new procedure, and if there are no other benefits to it, then they shouldn't they should not implement it. And if they want to speed it up, then they should find a different procedure that might work. C says compute the differences between the two times and determine if the requirements are met for this test. Okay, now we take our, our differences using the Excel that we already did in a, in a past problem, and we see that there are only 10, 9 or 10, it looks like, pieces of data. So we're not enough to use the central limit theorem. And so we need to do a QQ plot. Now, a QQ plot, if you if you remember, we can copy these again, or if you have them on the other, you can keep them from there. And we go to our descriptive statistics, and to the QQ plot down here at the bottom. And then it's a good idea to clear the contents first. And then we're going to copy, oh, shoot. Copy. We want to copy this part, and then we want to paste. Okay, and then we can see that our scatter plot is kind of all over the place. But if we sort from smallest to largest, it puts them in the semi-linear formation. Okay. D. Continue with the test regardless of what you found in Part C. Compare the test statistic. Okay, our test statistic is 1.22. And we can find that on our Excel sheet in the quantitative inferences page. Okay, we have our confidence level at 95, our null is zero, remember, and we are doing a two-tailed, not equal to. And you'll find our T value right there, the 1.22. Now, on all your answer sheets, it'll have 1.22 or negative 1.22. The negative and positive might come if you put this column in this position. For example, if we cut that, pasted it down, pasted it down there, and then if we move this over to there, this up, you'll notice that the it'll switch. At least it should. Hello. Are you in the middle? Yeah, you're okay though. I can edit it out. I'm almost done though. I've only got just a couple parts left. Let me just finish real quick. I'm just gonna get my Oh, okay. You, Are you? Yeah. Okay. I'm almost done. I was gonna go home after this one. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay. No. Okay. Unless you brought lunch. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. So, uh, take out that last part. It didn't change. I'm not sure. Not quite sure why. I guess maybe they fixed it or something. So, you can take out that last part about me cutting and pasting the stuff there. Okay. So, now we're going to. Oh, okay. So, now we're going. Oh, uh, shoot. Okay. I'll change it back. So that it, oh, no, I won't. Okay. Now, E, state the degrees of freedom. Okay, the degrees of freedom are 8. Now, it says it right there, but we also knew that, right, because there's 9 pieces of value, there's 9 pieces of, there's nine pieces of data, 
and there are eight degrees of freedom because it's nine minus one. F says compute the p-value and compare it to the alpha level. Now our p-value is given right here at 0.25 and our alpha level is 0 0.05. So our p-value is greater than our alpha level. G says make a decision. Do you reject the null hypothesis, hypothesis or fail to reject? Since the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null. H says present your conclusion in the form of an English statement. Oh, I didn't come over here with this one. For all of those questions, you can just use the screenshot. I, rather than testing a hypothesis, now say you just want to estimate the mean difference between wait time at the 95% level. What would you do? Do it and paste your results here. Okay, so here we're going to use a confidence interval of uh, that is given on the screen. So here we have our confidence interval. It's between negative 0.9 and 3.0. Okay, and again, those might those numbers might be switched if your variable one and variable two are switched. Question three. Okay, now real quick, just to remind you how to load the data in, you go to Open, Data, and then wherever your data is at, make sure to grab it. Open that up. Okay, now the first thing that we need to do is we need to make a new variable. That variable needs to be the difference. So we're going to come up here to Data, and then, oh, excuse me, sorry, um, Transform, and then Compute Variable. Up in that top left corner, I'm going to call it the I'm going to call the variable the difference because that's what it is, just the difference of one between the other. And so we'll do post. I'll input that, and then minus the pre. Okay. So now our new variable is going to consist of the post score minus the pre score. So here is our difference column right here, this third column. And now it's this third column that we're going to run the statistics on. So first off, we would like to get the summary statistics. So we're going to come down to descriptive statistics and explore like we've done in the past. But this time, instead of putting in one of the columns that was given to us, we're going to be using the difference. Okay, just double check. We want a 95% confidence interval. Uh, plots, we're going to want a histogram, and then eventually we'll probably want a QQ plot, so I'll add that in there right now. And OK. And the out pop output window, we get our statistics. So, for, well, first off, here is the histogram that you can copy and paste into your data. And right here is the um, are the statistics. So here's the, the mean of 1.055. Here is the standard deviation of 2.6. And our n is 9. Question 4, part C, says compute the difference between the two times and determine if the requirements are met for the test. Okay, so Unfortunately, we don't have more than 30 pieces of data, so we're going to need to run the QQ plot. And if you missed it from the last part, I'll show you again. You go to Analyze, and then Descriptive Statistics, Explore, and then under your, under your plots, just make sure you hit the Normality Plots with Test. Okay, so we're going to continue. And then if we scroll down just a bit, here is our... QQ plot. Okay, it doesn't look too bad. For D, it says continue with the test regardless of what you found in Part C. Compute the test statistic. Okay, now to find the test statistic, we are going to analyze and we're going to compare means. And the mean that we're looking for now is the difference. And we're still working at 95%, so we hit. And our difference 
we're assuming our null hypothesis is zero, so we keep that test value at zero. And right here, this table will answer the next few questions for us. So with a standard, with a uh, degrees of freedom of eight, because our sample size is nine, part F says ask for the P value, which is right here, the significant two tailed, which is 2.57. Part I, rather than testing a hypothesis, now we just want to estimate the mean difference with 95% confidence interval. And that is given right here under the lower and upper confidence interval. So this is on the left hand side of your parenthesis, or this is, it would go parenthesis and then negative 3.05 and then comma 0.93 and then close parenthesis. Okay, so we're going to do this on Excel. Okay, so we can get all of our information from the factory assemblies times uh, sheet. We're going to copy and paste this information here. We're going to paste it into our quantitative inference procedure under variable one. And we paste the numbers and then the differences will automatically be calculated. Now real quick, just so you understand, this is 11. 0.6 was his time, and then 10.7. So he had a 0.9 difference, or he went 0.9 minutes or whatever it is, hours uh, faster the second time, okay? And our mean is found right here. So we have a mean of 1.0. So the, they averaged 1.05 faster and this, with a standard deviation of 2.0. Five, nine. Okay, now in order to make the histogram for this problem, we're going to copy, we're going to take our differences, because that's the column we're doing our statistics with, we're going to copy it, and then we're going to come over to our quantitative descriptive statistics and paste it in, and just make sure to clear out this, this extra stuff. Okay, so here's our handy dandy histogram that we can copy and paste into our document as well. And if you'll notice that the mean and standard deviation are also given on that sheet. C says compute the differences between the two times and determine if the requirements are met for this test. Okay, now we take our, our differences using the Excel that we already did in a, in a past problem, and we see that there are only 10, 9 or 10 it looks like pieces of data. So we're not enough to use the central limit theorem. And so we need to do a QQ plot. Now a QQ plot, if you if you remember, we can copy these again, or if you have them on the other, you can keep them from there. And we go to our descriptive statistics into the QQ plot down here at the bottom. And then it's a good idea to clear the contents first. And then we're going to copy, oh, shoot. We don't want to copy, we want to copy this part, and then we want to paste, okay? And then we can see that our scatter plot is kind of all over the place, but if we sort it from smallest to largest, it puts them in the semi-linear formation, okay? D. Continue with the test regardless of what you found in part C. Compare the test statistic. Okay, our test statistic is 1.22. And we can find that on our Excel sheet in the quantitative inferences page. Okay, we have our confidence level at 95. Our null is zero, remember. And we are doing a two-tailed, not equal to. And you'll find our T value right there, the 1.22. Now, E, state the degrees of freedom. Okay, the degrees of freedom are eight. Now, it says it right there, but we also knew that, right, because there's nine pieces of value, there's nine pieces of, there's nine pieces of data, and there are eight degrees of freedom because it's nine minus one. F says compute the p-value and compare it to the alpha level. Now, our p-value is given right here at 0.25, and our alpha level is 0.05. So our p-value is greater than our alpha level. 
G says make a decision. Do you reject the null hypothesis, hypothesis or fail to reject? Since the p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null. I, rather than testing a hypothesis, now say you just want to estimate the mean difference between wait time at the 95% level. What would you do? Do it and paste your results here. Okay, so here we're going to use a confidence interval uh, that is given on the screen. So here we have our confidence interval. It's between negative 0.9 and 3.0. Okay, and again, those, might, those numbers might be switched if your variable 1 and variable 2 are switched. 